Little Bear and the Marco Polo by Elise Holman Manurick. Pictures by Dorothy Doubleday. Little Bear was in the garden playing with his ladybug when Grandmother Bear called. Little Bear, Grandfather needs help in the attic. Little Bear loved the attic. He hurried to join Grandfather Bear. He took Ladybug along. When Little Bear got to the attic, Grandfather Bear was sweeping. What a lot of dust! They both sneezed. At chew, at chew. Let's open the window, said Grandfather. I'll do it, said Little Bear. He opened the window and Ladybug flew off. Grandfather, said Little Bear, my Ladybug flew away. Grandfather said, don't worry, she'll be back again. Grandfather Bear said, ouch, my back, I'm growing stiff. Little Bear, would you help me open the trunk? Little Bear was glad to do it. They opened the trunk and there was a blue jacket and a fancy blue cap. Grandfather put the cap on Little Bear's head. He draped the jacket over Little Bear's shoulders. There, he said, that makes you a sea captain just as I was. Little Bear found a mirror. He admired himself. Look at me, Grandfather. Now I am a sea captain just like you. All I need is a ship. But Grandfather Bear was sitting in his old chair. He had dozed off. Little Bear looked in the trunk again. He found a picture of a ship. Oh, cried Little Bear, what a fine ship. That, that woke Grandfather Bear up. Let me see it, Little Bear. Why, that is my ship. My own little ship called the Marco Polo. They both studied the picture. Why does it have that name? Asked Little Bear. Because, said Grandfather, Marco Polo was a sea captain too, and he explored the world. The world? Little Bear wondered. By now, Grandfather was wide awake. He said, fetch me the globe over there. See, said Grandfather, the world is round. The blue is water and the rest is land. Little Bear looked at the globe. What is all that white, he asked. That, said Grandfather Bear, is the North Pole, where the polar bears live. Little Bear asked, if we sailed there together, what would happen? Grandfather laughed. I'd shake the polar bear's paw, and you'd shake his paw too. Little Bear wanted to hear more. Where would we sail next, he asked. Grandfather Bear said, next we would sail to China to meet the giant panda bear. What would he look like, asked Little Bear. Oh, said Grandfather, he is black and white and very grand indeed.
are there other bears in other places? Little Bear asked. Grandfather Bear said, in Australia, there are koala bears. We could sail to Australia and get to meet some. They live in trees there. I could live in trees too, said Little Bear. Grandfather Bear asked, but could you live on leaves? Little Bear laughed and shook his head. No, thank you. But here we are in the attic, said Grandfather Bear. Let's see what else is in the trunk. They found a beautiful white dress and a picture of a lovely young bear wearing the dress. Grandfather Bear smiled. He said, there she is, your grandmother wearing this dress. She is wonderful, said Little Bear. That is what I thought too, said Grandfather Bear. So I asked her to marry me. And she did, shouted Little Bear. Yes, I was very lucky, said his grandfather. Little Bear asked, and then did you go sailing around the world together? No, said Grandfather Bear. Grandmother Bear wanted to build a house first. Our friends, the raccoons, helped us build it. And afterward, did you go around the world together? Asked Little Bear. No, said Grandfather Bear, because then we had to plant the fruit trees and the berry bushes. Little Bear was silent. Little Bear leaned on Grandfather's lap. He looked up at Grandfather and said, I do like fruits and berries, but I wonder about the Marco Polo. Where is the Marco Polo now? The Marco Polo is in dry dock, said Grandfather Bear. Do you want to see it? Yes, Little Bear wanted to see the Marco Polo with all his heart. On the way through the kitchen, they gave Grandmother Bear the white dress. Little Bear said, if you put on the dress, I'll dance with you. When we came back for lunch, we're going to see the Marco Polo. The Marco Polo rested on a wooden frame by the river. Some raccoons were washing it down. Little Bear took a deep breath. It's even more beautiful than I thought, he said. Grandfather Bear wiped away a tear. Little Bear climbed aboard. Ahoy there, he called to the raccoons. I'll, I will be your captain. Little Bear saluted and the raccoons cheered. We will sail around the world, just you wait and see. And then it was time to go home. Little Bear took Grandfather Bear's paw. You're not sad, are you, Grandfather? He asked, looking up at Grandfather Bear. No, Grandfather Bear was not sad. I'm just plain hungry, Little Bear, he said.
Grandmother Bear had a picnic basket ready and waiting. She was wearing the white dress. Just a mite tight, she said laughing. Little Bear looked up at Grandmother, took her paw, and said, Lovely lady, will you marry me? Too late, said Grandfather Bear. She's already mine. And said, Grandmother Bear, both of you are mine. You may now help each other carry the picnic basket out to the garden. See, little bear, said Grandfather, there's no place like home. Just remember that when you begin to sail around the world. Little bear nodded. He would have answered, but his mouth was full of cookie, a peanut butter and chocolate one. <laughs>